listening to There's No Place Like Home, the radio show coming to you on WRXB 1590 AM and Pinellas County Connection TV. This program is presented to you as an opportunity to hear information that can help you fulfill the dream of owning your very own home. We also share information about upcoming special events and programs to help you enjoy the good life here in Pinellas County, as well as other items of interest. The sponsor of this program is the Housing Finance Authority of Pinellas County, which offers the First Time Home Buyers Program, Your Key to Home Ownership, helping people in Pinellas, Pasco, and Polk Counties make their dreams of home ownership a reality. I'm Jane Merlin, alongside Frank Bowman, your host for today's show. How are you today, Frank? I'm doing very well, Jane. How about you? I'm doing great. You know, it's November already and the holidays are approaching and I'm sure you're all ready for the holidays, though. You're so organized. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, actually, I really like this time of year. One of the things is we finally get a break in weather and it, it makes things much, much more uh, pleasant. At least we hope so. Very true. Uh, last winter was not very cool, but uh, this year, just a little bit of coolness. We don't need cold. I know you're not a big cold fan. Uh, well, it depends on the circumstances, but usually <laughs> I'm a very warm weather, you know, native Floridian. Mm-hmm. So. Well, the other thing about this season is it's uh, moving towards our holidays. Lots of people be thinking about shopping mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, preparing for, for the holiday season. And I know a lot of people may think that they're smart consumers, but uh, there are unfortunately individuals in our community that are skilled at deception and fraud. And those folks take advantage of even the smartest consumers. We're going to give you some important tips on how to protect yourself and be an even better informed consumer. Joining us today will be Deborah Berry, who's the Operations Manager with Pinellas County's Justice and Consumer Services. Folks may recognize Deborah from previous shows as she's been a regular guest here on our on No Place Like Home. This is uh, a seasonal program that we like to provide good, important information to people. So make sure you have a pen and paper to jot down some important information. But before we get into today's topic, Jane, I understand you have some an update from our sponsor. I do. Thank you very much, Frank. The Housing Finance Authority, or HFA, is offering its first-time home buyers program for individuals in Pinellas, Pasco, and Polk counties who have never owned a home, have not owned a home in the last three years, or veterans. The HFA offers a low rate on its home key mortgage, which is a 30-year fixed rate. And if you need a little help with down payment and closing costs, they can help you with that also with the Home Key Second Mortgage. Now, in addition to the First Time Home Buyer Program, we want to remind everybody about Pinellas County's newest housing initiative for veterans, Proud Ground Pinellas. This program offers quality homes at incredible prices. To get your key to home ownership or a Proud Ground Pinellas home for veterans and active military personnel, Give us a call at 727-464-8210 or visit the website at www.pinellascounty.org slash community slash HFA. And by the way, that's the same number to reach us for more information or comments about the show. Or you can email us at housingfinanceauthority at pinellascounty.org. You can also catch past shows by logging onto the website. And you can even watch us on YouTube. Frank, we've made it big. We're on YouTube now. YouTube. Well, it's... All the younger people in my life are impressed, uh, so <laughs> that's a good thing. Uh, and, it, and it moves me forward into the new uh, information world here. I've lagged behind somewhat. So, <laughs> Well, anyway, today we have a very interesting guest joining us uh, to discuss a number of important items that we should all be aware of to help us be smarter consumers. Deborah Berry has been with Pinellas County for 29 years. She's the operations manager for Pinellas County Justice and Consumer Services, and we're delighted to have her share her expertise and advice on important consumer issues. Welcome to No Place Like Home, Deborah. I'm so excited to be back. It's good to have you here, and uh, we know that this is a very important topic for people, so uh, we're happy that you uh, return every year. Let's start by discussing some of the scams that are are in the media lately and and seem to be on the rise. Uh, First, the advanced fee loan scam. Tell us about this, and uh, how can folks protect themselves from this? This scam targets consumers with poor credit who apply online for a loan or receive a telephone call because con artists do buy and share mailing lists of people who may have filed bankruptcy or have poor credit. 
consumers are, are instructed to send money ahead of time for the loan. And what happens is they usually ask them to wire the money or withdraw the money out of their checking account. Once that's done, the company disappears. All phone numbers are disconnected, websites are taken, taken down, and the consumers never receive the money. My goodness. It's, um, now, what is it that they're offering that may, is appealing to people? An easy loan. That just for a little money up front, maybe several hundred dollars, and we can get you that loan. We don't care if you filed bankruptcy. We don't care if you have a bad credit report. We can get you that loan. And people out there are suffering, and sometimes this seems appealing and almost seems real. But it is too good to be true, and it is. And that is uh, one of the, the things that you've told us in the past, if it seems too good to be true. Uh, it likely is, and you need to check things out. Well, another scam that we've heard about recently uh, is related to sweepstakes. Uh, how are these? Uh, right. Working? You know, many people, some, you know, enter lotteries or sweepstakes, and, and they may receive something in the mail saying, hey, you've been awarded this sweepstakes. All we need you to do is to pay for processing or taxes and let us um, withdraw the money out of your checking account or wire the money to us. And what happens, once they send the money, they never hear from the company again. Even if the letter looks real, even if the address looks real, even if you check out the company's name and address, that may be a fake company or they're using somebody else's company name. And when you wire money, you're wiring it anywhere in the world. So there's no telling where that money is actually going. It could actually be going out of the, out of the U.S.? It probably is. Canada, Nigeria, Costa Rica. Mm. So these scams aren't even necessarily being conducted by, by folks locally. This no. is an international problem. No. Now. It's an international problem. And also, we've had folks here doing this scam that we've caught. So consumers just need to be aware that if you haven't entered a sweepstakes or lottery, chances are you have not been awarded a prize. But the red flag is if they ask you to send money ahead of time. Yeah, that seems to be the common thread, in because that's the way the con artists are making their money. They're getting some cash from you ahead of time and, as you suggested, just disappearing. Um, another uh, scam that uh, also be, uh, appears to be on the increase is uh, secret shopping or work-at-home scam. Now, I've gotten emails on both of these at my house. <laughs> so uh, give us an overview of these, uh, these problems. You know, this is a real job uh, that some companies utilize people to go and shop different stores mm -hmm. and determine what prices different stores are offering. So the scam artists have said, hey, we can, we can um, construct a phony company and make people think that we're offering this service and they can make some money. And it's this email, like you said, or a letter in the mail. And sometimes with the letter, it's a check. We're giving you an advance on your earnings, but we sent you too much money. Can you deposit this cashier's check and then why? us some of the money and usually the bank will hold the check for a few days and, and it clears that's federal law they can only hold a cashier's check so long and then they give you the green light to withdraw some of the money and the letter instructs the people to wire the money to somebody the maybe two thousand over four thousand dollar check well a week or two later the check is returned back to the bank as fraudulent now the person is on the hook for that two thousand dollars they withdrew and wired to someone well, now, banks usually don't allow you to, uh, to dispense funds that haven't cleared. How is that working? Well, there's certain laws that, that you could only hold certain types of checks for so long. And this check looks real. And now banks are cautioning people, but still, we're still seeing people getting taken on this scam. You know, maybe they can only hold a cashier's check for seven days before they clear it for withdrawal. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks later, this fraudulent check comes back to the bank. You know, it never ceases to amaze me how innovative, I guess. I mean, I don't want to give a compliment to these people who are doing these scams or anything, but it, it never ceases to amaze me how really creative they are and how they can make these things look so real from the sweepstakes mailings and these checks 
and they also, if you have questions, you can dial this phone number. And so they have a script. If you're kind of like, oh, is this real? Sure, it's real. Do you want to miss out on this money? And what happens is once they get your money, it's a prepaid cell phone that they just throw away and they, mm-hmm. you know, have a new number. So they really think of anything. It's probably very difficult then, I would imagine, to catch these people and prosecute them. Because they're anywhere in the world. Although some have been caught and prosecuted, um, a lot of times people don't receive their money back. Is there any idea of, of uh, how much money we might be talking that You're talking about m- millions of dollars because you also have the sweetheart scam. We got an email not too long ago from someone who sent $38,000 um, to help someone that they met in a chat room, that they were dating, you know, online. And and after, you know, a few chats, then, you know, a few weeks, then they start asking you for money. And it goes on over a period of time. Unbelievable, isn't it? It is. And it's, um, you know, unfortunately, some folks are in a frame of mind or their life setting is such that these things are, are have appeal to them. Well, some... I think you get desperate. You know, mm-hmm. you're in a desperate situation. You need money and you need it fast. And an opportunity presents itself. And Florida has a, um, when you're talking about the advance fee scam, Florida has a law um, prohibiting people from charging an advance fee unless they're a bank or financial institution and for offering a loan. However, now you're talking about through the Internet. And the company is not in Florida. They're out of state. And they're not really a company when regulators mm-hmm. start to try to investigate and try to find out who these people are. Well, and of course, uh your department is dealing with these issues all the time. What are some of the things uh, that, that you do to either help individuals who've been caught in one of these scams or, or are questioning whether something is real? Well, we, we try to educate people up front about the scams. That's why I'm here today. But also, if we get a call like that, there is a, um, um, a national fraud uh, website that people can f- uh, file a complaint with under the National White Collar Crime Center, and it's in conjunction with the FBI for these type of Internet-type scams. And if people are located in Pinellas County, they'll send us a complaint to try to investigate either the consumer or the business located here and we have background checking software uh, we we try to use social networking to try to track people down in order to try to resolve these cases or if we can prosecute them well I know that you all have done a tremendous amount of good work in since you all have existed uh, in helping people um, especially when it comes to the home improvement scams yes. you know somebody comes out to your home and they do some work and um, they don't perform. Give us kind of an overview of how some of these are what you're seeing recently. Well, and this has always gone on with the door-to-door solicitors. They're in the neighborhood doing some work, and they stop by or see you out on the lawn and say, hey, you know, we can do some work on your driveway, we can clean your roof, um, and give you a really good price. Well, people are like, oh, that's a good price. You know, I got to get it done now. Okay, go ahead. And then they do shoddy work, or they ask for money up front and say, hey, um, I need to get some materials. I'll be right back. And they never see the people again. Mm-hmm. And this continuously happens. Uh, Take, for instance, a mobile home park. Maybe somebody has somebody doing some work at a mobile home park. A neighbor sees them, and they do the the first job correctly. Then they get um, contracts from other neighbors, and they never return. We see that often. So they actually come out and do the work one time and sort of set a sense of uh, propriety that this is a legitimate business, and they still then scam the rest of the cust- potential customers. Exactly. And then no one some, sometimes checks about a license until after they've been taken. Mm-hmm. And then they, oh, this person doesn't have a license. And that's why we really encourage people to do the checking up front. Well, and how can people do that? How, how do you check on the license of somebody that you want to do business with? There's a consumer resource guide on our website, on our homepage, that will give you a list of agencies to contact by email, by um, phone number, and by website to do your own background check. 
I designed this form because as I was doing the checks on companies, I said consumers have no idea where to go. So it's it's you know you could you can check our um, database for complaints. You can check the Better Business Bureau as a second resource. You can check the licensing department. You can check finance licenses. Check out your doctors. You know you name it. Well, you know, I, I take it a step further, too, um, in addition to going to your website, which I do very frequently if I'm going to have something major done at my home. But I ask for referrals exactly. from, from those businesses. And I, I call. I, I call the people. And, you know, if it's something that you can see from the outside, I'll, I drive by the home and just kind of see, you know, the, what the quality appears to be. So I, I think people need to do more of that. Exactly. You know, I had a conversation with someone who was building a home, a $100,000 home at the time. And I said, have you seen any of their homes? Have you been to any of their communities? No. I said, well, if you're going to spend that type of money, it's worth the drive. Do so. I do the same thing, Jan. I actually, I had a driveway put in for my mom. I actually, I got a referral. I actually went and looked at that driveway myself. Well, and this is something that, that is important because there are a lot of small businesses out there that are very legitimate, that are really working hard to, to make their own uh, livings. And, um, you know, it, it, we can't paint all these mm-hmm. contractors with the same brush, but mm-hmm. we need to participate in that checking out process. Right. The majority of businesses are hardworking individuals trying to make an honest living and do a, a very good job. However, there's a small element that puts a red mark on the industry. And the industry also complains about those mm-hmm. people because they can do a job cheaper because they don't have the proper license. They haven't uh, spent years perfecting their trade. Well, and I, too, I, I also know that you all have been successful in helping people resolve complaints from contractors who, you know, the, the individual or the, the homeowner thinks they didn't do a good enough job, and you all have been able to help with that too, right? Exactly. If the contractor is licensed, we offer mediation services just to get the parties talking to each other and hopefully resolve the situation. However, then the case where the person is not licensed or they're taking deposits and not doing the job, then we have to look at pursuing a criminal investigation and re- referring the matter for prosecution by the state attorney's office. And we do this so that the victim can and potentially receive some court order restitution and to stop the person from continuing to do it because if they get continuously get away they won't stop well that's like I said it's it's something that everyone needs to be aware of is there any kind of increase in these kind of scams during the the holiday season or Exactly. There is because people need additional income from both sides. You know, you have uh, homeowners that are looking for like the, you know, extra income. That's the secret shopper scam or work at home scams. And then you have uh, business people who may have had their own business and they still have the bills. So, you know, they put an ad in a local little flyer. Uh, Someone calls them out and they just take take the money and, and don't come back. Sometimes it's easy as that. Well, it sounds like a, a fairly good rule of thumb would be to never participate with any contract or negotiation where you're required to pay before you receive any services. And some con- some co- companies will require a, a partial payment up front, and that's why you have to shop around, get several estimates, and you also have to check out the company. I mean, you could do criminal checks, civil checks. Are there any lawsuits out there? Are there any tax liens on this person that I'm giving money to? And also, if you're home alone, sometimes maybe ask a neighbor to come over if you're having people coming to your home to give you bids because if you don't see something maybe the neighbor will oh that's a good point yeah very good especially senior citizens well yeah and as you suggested when you were helping your mom select Mm -hmm. a driveway contractor um you know a lot of us should should work with our parents when when they're 
you know, looking to do some work like this. Now, you said folks should should look up this information on folks. Can they do that through the references in your website? Yes, they can. We have links, like I said, to the um, um, the construction industry, um, uh, financial industry, real estate licenses. I check them all um, to make sure they're properly licensed, how long they've been in business, corporate records, and if they have any... Um, civil suits, criminal records. You would be surprised sometimes with these door-to-door solicitors and people let them in their homes. Then once they're taken advantage of, they file complaints with us. And we're doing background checks. It's like, oh, my God, this person should have never been in this home. So if that's not a red flag, I hope it is. Well, we've mentioned your website a couple of times. You want to go ahead and let folks know what that is. Yes, it's PinellasCounty.org slash consumer. And our telephone number is 727-464-6200. And you have folks there in the office who can kind of help walk people through these processes and give them some good advice before they enter into a work relationship with a contractor, right? Exactly. We have an investigator on duty to talk with you, discuss any potential um, consumer transactions you're thinking about getting involved with so that we can lead you in the right direction. And also, if you have a problem, to try to help you and and refer you to resources and also help you file a complaint with our department. That five-minute phone call may save somebody a tremendous headache and a lot of money in the future. That's true. Exactly. And one, one, one quick example I want to give you, if investment scams, if someone's asking you to invest in something, maybe you're going to invest $50,000 of your retirement money. Don't you want to spend a couple of hundred dollars to seek advice from a, an attorney first? Mm-hmm. People want to save that money, but you, your potential loss ex- far exceeds that. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of the folks who are tuning into our show today are uh, at some point may need credit. And whether it's to purchase a vehicle or a home or do a home improvement project or something like that, you, you need to have good credit to get that loan, uh, especially a loan with, uh, with a decent rate that's not uh, predatory. Um, what do we need to do as consumers to make sure that our credit is in good shape? Well, you know, the Federal Trade Commission several years ago established a program that allows for people to get three credit reports each year from the three reporting credit agencies. And you can do it online or you can give them a call. And it's annualcreditreport.com is the website. And the telephone number is 877 322 Eight two two eight. Review that credit report, especially to make sure you you have not been a victim of identity theft. Which brings to my mind um, constantly getting emails and phone calls saying I should check my credit report. Uh, are there some of those services that are scams as well? Yes, because if they're if 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 you're not going to annualcreditreport.com, those other websites may eventually try to uh, seek money from you and they have not been been cleared so you're doing it at your own risk so please use the the this particular website and that service is uh, free absolutely free i think that's an important point to reiterate is the fact that so many of the things that are out there for people um especially all the services that you provide that's all for free and people don't need to be paying an outside entity for some of these same services. Exactly, and that's and I'm giving an example with the in the foreclosure area. Um, at, we had a huge problem with for with um, uh, people taking advantage of people in foreclosure by um, offering to help them by maybe give us a thousand dollars. Don't pay your mortgage. Give us a thousand dollars, and we'll help you with this foreclosure process. But, in fact, there are free government-funded agencies that help people and don't steal the equity in their home. And that's we're very much aware of that because the Housing Finance Authority and Pinellas County's Department of Community Development, they actually fund not-for-profit organizations that provide foreclosure services. We've had some of those folks on the show in the past. So that's true. You do not need to pay for a service that's likely to be... Uh, uh, a scam, 
when these services are available free of charge and and they are le- they're legitimate services they need to be out there but the folks that are providing them with your best interest in in mind are going to be able to provide them for free in most cases mm-hmm. right and it, and and the most important thing is don't let people tell you not to pay your mortgage send me the money don't pay your mortgage mm-hmm. and Pinellas County does have a website if you are going through foreclosure please visit pinellascounty.org slash foreclosure you can find a link to those agencies and I just want to encourage people if you need help get it now don't wait until it's too late well, when should people uh, look for that assistance? I mean, the, everybody, I guess the first steps are notification from your mortgage company that there's a problem. and That is one indication. But if you're looking at your finances and you see that you can't make your mortgage payment, these same HUD certified agencies will help you look at your, um, your, the, your cash flow and give you counseling on how to better manage your money before you even miss a mortgage payment. And they can also help you um, try to refinance your mortgage to get a lower interest rate. So start early with seeking help. We see so many people that that the, um, the, the they're getting ready to be kicked out of the property because the, the judge has ordered them to leave when they're trying to seek help. I mean, and, and I know this is a hard thing to do to admit that you can't pay your mortgage Mm -hmm. but there are programs there to help you and the quicker you get started the better it will be that's some excellent advice that could save people a lot of money and possibly their home exactly and I would imagine that if you are sort of proactive in contacting your lender and saying look at I I have this obligation for payments and it looks like in the next couple of months I'm not going to be able to can we begin talking about ways to to address this the lenders probably going to be a lot more receptive to to working with you at that stage they will be and sometimes there's people that need a little help in doing that mm-hmm. um, you know maybe they just don't know what to say to the lender so there's help out there to to walk you through the process and people can get referred to or you have information on those uh, service agencies on your website as well yes and the these agencies are the HUD certified counseling agencies and there's a list um, at the foreclosure site pinellascounty.org slash foreclosure Right. Very good information. Now, Deborah, you know, it's we talked earlier that it's holiday season and um, a lot of people are going to be asked to provide some donations to very worthwhile charitable organizations. But we all know that there are some that aren't necessarily worthwhile. And we only have a couple moments left. But can you give us some good tips and advice on how to make sure that we are giving our hard earned money to an appropriate organization? Yes, I can. Unfortunately, there's some um, charities that try to use sound-alike names like other well-known charities. So regardless of who's asking you for money, we have a link on our website where you can check out the charity to determine how much is actually going for the charitable purpose. And charities are required to be registered in the state of Florida and provide this information to you. So there's a link on our website and you can determine how much is going to actually to help charities children with toys to help find missing children and I encourage you to check before you give very very good advice Mm -hmm. and there are lots of organizations out there that are doing good things with the money and it would be unfortunate if you were willing and able to contribute that your money didn't go for the purpose it was intended And demand, I think, is up because so many families have lost jobs and they are in dire economic situations. And so the needs are greater and there's there's more organizations who do need the assistance. Right. And you can tell if it's a legitimate charity, they'll send you a copy of their financial report if you request. So, Mm -hmm. you know, that's a key, too. All right. Well, just real quickly before we wrap up, go ahead and repeat your website and telephone number for folks. Pinellas County Justice and Consumer Services website is pinellascounty.org slash consumer. Our telephone number is 727-464-6200. 
All right, and we would very much like to thank our guest today, Ms. Deborah Berry, Pinellas County Department of Justice and Consumer Services. We'd also like to thank Pinellas County Communications Department and, of course, our friends at WRXB 1590 AM. Be sure to join us next month, and please contact us if you'd like more information about this show or would like to provide us with some feedback. I'm Frank Bowman. And I'm Jane Merlin. Thanks for tuning in, and remember, there's There's no no place place like home. home.